Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us on ABN Television Channel 15.9. Facts and Figure is a program. My name is Convata Ho Hateyemo. Today we'll be looking at the crisis and the situation facing Nigeria, all the problems facing Nigeria, so to say. Nigeria as a country, what is going on in that country? What is happening? Why are people um, shouting for change, 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 and are they really getting the change they were asking for from the federal government and from the leadership of that country? Today on this program to discuss this issue is a political analyst. His name is Mr. Adekunle Adeleye. You're welcome, Mr. Adekunle Adeleye, on this. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, if I may say, what do you think? If I will come in at this junction, what do you think is really wrong with Nigeria? What is wrong with Nigeria in terms of the economy, leadership, and employment? Okay, uh, uh, this, this is how I'm going to answer that question. What is wrong with Nigeria? Uh, it is, it is, I, I'm going to approach this from a biblical perspective because I'm a Christian. Uh, there's a point in the Bible that says to the tent of Israel. And in social service, it's often said that a river that forgets its source loses its purpose. We were colonized by the Greeks. And sometime in 1973 or thereabout, we started tilting towards the American system of uh, governance. And today I can tell you, America does not care about us. Unless they have something to gain from us. But most importantly, um, the problem of Nigeria is not just of leadership. It is not less of leadership, but more of followership. That's number one. Number two, the chaotic business culture in Nigeria is also a problem. And what do I mean by put quite chaotic business culture? We don't have a basis for our policies. We, we, we take from right, from left, from front, from backward, and this if all these forces become contingent forces, the bulk heads. I don't know if you remember the later uh, uh, Obafemi Odo, when he was the premier of Western region, uh, we were told he had a political ideology. And that ideology, if, I, if my memory serves me right, is, is known as uh, uh, democratic socialism. He now based his manifesto on democratic uh, on that ideology. Not only that, he was able to marry the manifesto with the ideology so that we have a streamlined culture, a streamlined structure whereby he came about with what we see in the western region of Nigeria. The success is monumental. Everything you see in Nigeria today is as a result of the growth, political growth, social growth, economic growth of the Western region. So the problem of Nigeria, I'm not going to say corruption. Nobody is corrupt, but the system is corrupt. If, if, the, if they are the, the, the Pope was to govern Nigeria today, he would become corrupt because he's working on a corrupt system. I, I don't know if that answers your question. Maybe there's something else you might want me to say. Maybe you can. Maybe there are some areas I can't fight and turn down. Well, now. really, if we look at some decades back, there was a time a dollar, a naira is equivalent to a pound. And uh, you can get, uh, with two dollars, you get a naira. That means naira is better of dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, today, a dollar to is, is equal to three. If you have 365 naira, you get a dollar. What has happened? within that time and now. Why this drastic uh, change? Uh, l let's go back to that so-called 19, in the 80s, 1985 to be precise, when the then Minister of uh, Finance, uh, Falai, Ulu Falai, uh, in cohort with the federal government led by uh, uh, IBB, came up with this structural adjustment program. Well, the structural adjustment program might be good to some extent, but where it fell short of the people's expectations was when they introduced 
this exchange rate, the, uh, I think economists call, I'm not an economist, I'm, I'm a political scientist, a uh, parallel market whereby the throw Nigeria as a currency against the dollar and all other currencies of the world that are the Dutch Mac, the Swiss francs, uh, and the French, uh, French, what was it, French currency of the French, I can't remember. And they forgot to identify that Nigeria is a consumer nation. We are not, we're ne we've never been in production since oil. We've always, we've always relied on oil as a means of foreign exchange. So the OPEC, they detect what happens with our economy. OPEC detects what happens with our economy. So where there is no other means of production in Nigeria, how then do you bring that against the foreign exchange until we start producing in Nigeria. As for, uh, instead of being a consumer nation, be a uh, production nation, producing nation, we will never get it right. With regards to how the, the, the dollar and the pounds has risen so high today, we're going to have to call every successive government since that time to question why they've not been able to to, 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 to bring that uh, exchange rate to, to it. I mean, something reasonable. And what would be something reasonable? I don't know. Oh. Another problem I see facing Nigeria, or we generally see facing Nigeria, is this massive uh, migration out of the country. All citizens, most, don't let me say all, most people, especially the youths, they want to leave the country. What is the cost of us, and what can be done so that people can, the youth can be uh, stable and uh, believe in themselves in their country? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, that's not, I, I don't know, but it's, there is massive insecurity in the country. And the government of the day must be able to face up to it. And when I talk about insecurity, not just uh, physical insecurity, I mean economic insecurity, health, uh, freedom of to speak and uh, to freedom of speech, uh, oh, and all other things, health, uh, uh, insecurity from external aggression, and all that. That is why people are leaving the country. We have the issues of Boko Haram now that metamorphosized into uh, how Safran hurts me then there is no job in the country. Everybody there is this poverty, massive poverty. We are paper tigers. If, if they come up with economic indices in Nigeria, they tell we bring that rate of 3, 3 point something percent, 6 point something percent, and give you all those figures. But it does not reflect in the day-to-day -day lifestyle of Nigerians. So that is why I believe, that's why people are living the country in droves, in such of greener pastures. Everybody, every Nigerian, you see in the UK, in France, in Germany, in uh, the United States of America, in Canada, or even in Ghana, <laughs> isn't it funny? They're looking for greener pastures because the country has failed them. And to the solution, to the solution, it's a very simple solution. You have to go back to the basics. Wherever there is no law and order, there will never be peace. They, you can't come out with any system, any, any, any project, any program to bring the nation forward. It has to be law and order first. And what do I mean by law and order? That can be started with a massive police reform. I, I have, for the past three years now, I've been pursuing a project with the federal government, and I've been probably able to find someone to talk to. It's about the police reform. So that it's my reform. I've, I've done my research, and I've seen the police reform for the, for the past 40 years. Not as close to what I'm proposing for Nigeria. It, it is going to infect the reform, if adopted, is going to infect every sector of the Nigerian society. Nigeria will become a better place. It will stop corruption. Not the people being corrupt, but the system being corrupt. Before we go on break, uh, looking at it, uh, ex men killings here and there, play two uh, crises. Uh, we've not seen any security head, either in the Nigerian army or in the navy or and the police, which has been like questioned or sanctioned or you know relieved of the assignments, maybe for incapacity to deliver. Can we say this 
has a major role to play in the death of citizens in that country. Why must you just mention the security of the uh, services? Why must you, why, why must you mention just uh, the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, the police, and so on? Why not the, the administration, Something, someone higher up in the administration? Why, why can't you mention one of those people? Maybe the, the Minister of Internal Affairs, maybe the Minister of the, the and some other, all, other key ministers. Why can't you hold them accountable? Because we Nigerians, we have adapted, we have adopted a system whereby there will be no consequences, no matter what happens, until we change that, that, that system, until we find people accountable for their actions, until they face consequences. Things will always continue to be the way it is now. There have to be consequences. If, if, you, if, if uh, the project is under my watch and I fail, it's one of two things. Say that I resign honorably. I have, never, have you ever heard of Nigerians resigning honorably? Maybe one or two. Uh, uh, the late Sai Sholari and, uh, and uh, what is your income? They resigned honorably when, some, when the system put under their care failed. But can we say that about most of Nigerians? The problem is not just uh, the government, like I told you. It is not less of leadership, but it is more followership. Because Nigerians don't know who to follow, when to follow, how to follow, and how, what to follow. So uh, there is a problem in the pipeline to address all that. If only Nigeria, the Nigerian government, Nigerian people are allowed to, to go about that. Ah, right now we go on a commercial break. We'll be right back very soon. Please stay tuned. Remain focused. We'll be right back. Do you have items you want to bring from Nigeria, such as clothes, shoes, packaged foodstuff? Or would you like to start a business in the US importing items from Nigeria to sell in stores like eBay and Amazon? We are lots of people are making good money now. Well, starting from March 1st, 2018, Ship to Nigeria will be shipping from Nigeria to the US for as low as $50. And most importantly, we will deliver to your doorstep anywhere in the USA within 7 to 10 business days. So by now you are asking, what do I need to do? It's simple. Drop off your item at our Lagos office or you can call us to schedule a pickup from anywhere in Nigeria. Our team will professionally pack your items, help with export documentation to ensure that they are never seized by the US customs as many people face now. You can even use our US warehouse, which is over 23,000 square foot of space to store your items for as long as you need them. Or you can have us dispatch to all your customers as they order from you from all over the US. We have the experience you need. So call us on the number on your screen. using an auction cars you can own a zero mileage brand new vehicle with little or zero percent down payments here is the good news Likon or Lalikon is a new floor manager as telling my call to yellow sender it's ready to find you a deal that will work for you two years tire rotation bumper to bumper all to 36,000 miles plus two years free oil change Stalin my call to your sender 9400 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas 77074. Open 8:30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Email him at lagashin at stalinmacalltoyota.com or call him on 832-807-3581. 832-807-3581. Thank you for making me use a brand new car. Welcome back on this um, same program, Facts and Figure. We're talking about Nigeria as a country. Um, as, as we move further, uh, my guest is Adekunle Adeleye, a political analyst. 
and we have heard so much from him, and we're still going to hear more. Mr. Adekunle Adeleye. Yes, sir. We all know that uh, during the 80s, President Muhammadu Buhari has once been the president of Nigeria, has once been the helm of affairs of that country under the military era. Mm -hmm. We know what he did in those days, what he has done in those days. Presently, he has been able to, he has given another opportunity since 2015 right now till that, and is still planning, or the, the APC are still presenting him as the next presidential candidate on their, on their, uh, in the party. That 20, come 2019 is going to be Buhari, but this is where we are coming from. Look, looking at his age then, in the 80s, his present age, do you think that's a determinant factor in the best we can get from him? And so far, has he really tried, considering the fact of that change, he promised Nigerians? Maybe I should take some water before I answer this question, because uh, that's a loaded question. Oh. Excuse me. I don't think age has got anything to do with who becomes what in Nigeria, even though there has been agitations for youth and, you know, and the rest of it. Uh, looking at why as a person, I think he's probably a good person. I think he probably loves Nigeria. But I still think, too, that he's limited when it comes to ideas. When he came to be the president of Nigeria in the 80s, he came with one, just one mantra, war against the discipline. And he was, he was mon monumentally successful in that regard, in that push. Nigerians became a disciplined people. Now, was he able to replicate that in this current uh, uh, regime? Perhaps. He came on the crisis huge for change. But if you ask me, I'll say Nigerians are shortchanged. You cannot. Nigerians are shortchanged. You cannot give what you don't have. All he had, or whatever he had, is uh, discipline. He, he is a disciplined human being. He is not, maybe he's not corrupt leader. Some people are saying it's a water that he's probably corrupt. I don't know about that. That's not what I see when I look at Buhari. I think he's a decent young man. Pardon me, he's an author, he's also young after all. But, but the thing is, I don't think A has got anything to do with who becomes the next Nigerian president. Who becomes the Nigerian next president is someone who can give us a real change that, we, that Nigerians are yearning for. And what is that real change Nigerians are yearning for? What's that real change Nigerians are yearning for? Nigerians are looking for good roads. They are looking for Good, hospital, good, good and affordable hospitals. They are looking for uh, security. They, 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 they are looking. For, they want to be able to afford three square meals a day. They, they, are, they, they are looking for all the things that are in, inside the seven elements of uh, human security. That is what Nigerians are looking for. But so far, it is very, it is very childish and, and sometimes uh, preposterous to come up with a policy that you cannot. Uh, that 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 lacks any empathy for human beings. They, they, I mean, I, back in those days, we had we used to have Pat Tony that comes up with a lot of uh, economic ideas, like economic ideas and all that. But was he able to replicate that in the day-to-day -day lives of Nigerians? It wasn't. The same is is the same with Buhari. He has been able to bring back some money from some stolen wealth from Nigeria. Yes, that's who he is. He doesn't like he doesn't like corrupt ideas or. or, or all these pervasive ideas of stealing from government coffers and all that. But what is he able to do with the money? Or the money that we don't even have? How can he create policies that's going to make us more, a more wealthy nation? That's, that's, the one, that's the problem he's having. I, I don't know if Nigerians have to vote him back again. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe. I hope he's watching this interview. Okay, now let's look at it. There are killings in uh, Plato. Killings everywhere in Plato. Well, he said that you can't blame him for the killings in, in, around Niger in, in Nigeria. You can't blame him for the killings in Plato. You can't blame him for the, the fire disaster in the, around Lagos State. Um, that's Lagos about the expressway, which I think there was a time when I was in Nigeria, I guess you know that there are time, there, are, there, are, there happens to be given time for all these trucks, all these trailers to move. Not any uh, during the time people are doing closing hours or, you know, 
But all these things are not being effective like that. So, you know, you know, they make laws yesterday, today they forget about the law, the, the laws they made yesterday. You know, but what we are, what I'm asking right now is this: looking at Buari as a person right now, APC bringing Buari out as their next uh, candidate, presidential candidate. Do you think they are being fair to Nigerians, considering what Buari has done in the past and what they have seen him? Achieve within this short period of these three years. Now bringing him back, the looted. You talk about the looted funds. What has he been able to do? Now has he been able to move Nigeria from point A to point B? We see people running out of this country in mass. People who are outside the country, they cannot even come back home. Not because they chose not to. You're talking about the issue of insecurity. Now we are saying all this with all this we are seeing right now, and they are still presenting to us. Hope we are there is not a, hope we are not seeing something like an undertone like some people are benefiting from his incapability, so to say. What do you think? Uh, I, I think he has moved us from point A to point A. Uh, however, he's right in certain respects in your in your lead up to that question. Is he responsible for the killings in Plateau State and everywhere else? He is not. I haven't seen, the last time he probably carried an AK-47 was me or maybe, or uh, just a uh, cock and shoot bombs, maybe when he was a junior officer. But like I said earlier on, the fish rots from the head. It is his prerogative to solve the problems of these killings. Uh, it, it used to be Boko Haram, now we don't have the House of Fallen Heads name. We have, we have uh, cults or all these Yahoo Plus boys. No, that's, that's so many, there is insecurity in Nigeria at all levels. And if you cannot provide any solutions to these problems, you don't have any problem, you don't have any right to aspire to be the next president of Nigeria. Like I said, I hope he's watching this program and make amends because it's never too late to try. And until we go to, to until we reform certain policies in Nigeria, uh, until we, we, we take advantage of the moment to create laws, to enact laws, then we are not going to go anywhere. Take, for instance, the issue of Saraki being, being, being the, the godfather of uh, the certain armed robbers that robbed in Kwara State and all that. And that illustrates the, 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 the satanic use of thugs for political gains. Maybe this is a time our, 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 our legislatures, they, they come out with a law to, to ban political thuggery in Nigeria and call it the Saraki law. Well, I'm not saying Saraki, obviously, he didn't go and rob those banks and kill those people. But we need to learn lessons from certain events in our, in our, in, in our history. And that, that's, that's a pivotal moment in our history that we should have taken advantage of. And with, with, uh, you asked me another question on Buhari uh, about people going in and out of yeah. not staying. And, uh, I mean, if it's not secure for you, if this environment is not secure for you, will you want to live here? Will you want to stay here right now? I bet, and even the cameraman will run away. It will run for his life. If there's a fire here right now, or if we have a gunshot, or, or, or whatever that might happen, we'll run away from here. So if it is not safe in Nigeria, I don't think anybody would want to stay in Nigeria. Well, because on this program, you know, we talk about benefits of people in the diaspora, mm -hmm. uh, what they stand to gain outside the country. Right now, I want to ask you, people who are coming, you have been in UK before, you've been, you're now you are in the US, mm -hmm. and we are in the US, <laughs> let me put it that way, right? You know, people are aspiring to come to foreign country, like US, UK, to go work. And so people are already here. What's your advice to them? How do you think they can stand to benefit? And do you think when they benefit in this uh, maybe structured economy where things are working, do you think they should go back home? And uh, with despite the insecurity, do you think they can still go back home and do something, make a difference? Or what do you think they should be their stand? What should be their position here outside the country? And what should be their position uh, uh, back home? You use one word that, that, that I've been searching for for a long time, structured economy. Now, uh, just to pose that against the Nigerian economy, chaotic economy, where there is no rhyme and reason anywhere for anything to grow. Because the idea is policies are, policies are always bumping heads. And why is that? 
because there is, there is, there is no cohesion. There is no cohesion in wha what Nigeria comes up with. There is no ideology. We only have manifestos in Nigeria. Every politician comes out with a manifesto. They always forget that an ideology dictates the manifesto. And you must have the dexterity to marry the manifesto to the ideology. Not only that, you must have the discipline to carry out that manifesto away from that ideology. And I'll say in the last 16 years of Nigerian nation period, uh, well, the, the, the most, I think Aula was the most uh, successful. You can, you can differ with me, no, anybody else can differ with me on that. But he had an ideology, democratic socialism. From democratic socialism, he came out with his manifestos. From his manifestos, he came out with the implementations. And the West of Nigeria today can speak of, they've been speaking of it for the past how many years now. Can you tell me any part of Nigeria that has to say the same thing of their region? So, so we, we must look at that too. There, there are so many things that are wrong with Nigeria. That we will never have enough time to, to discuss what the problem is with Nigeria. But if I'm granted that time and space for the questions that you ask me, I'll, 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 from, I'll, I'll dissect the problem of Nigeria and the solution to it. So do you think Nigerians should be welcome outside the country when they travel uh, outside? What should be the sound of people? Do they, should they be welcomed? I think we should be welcomed everywhere. Because if you look at this economy, this uh, American economy, there are lots of Nigerians in high places, in, in science, in, in arts, in, in, in economy, in politics, in, in, in sports. We should be welcomed. But, but it, it's a sad commentary that um, that countries such as these, UK, Germany, and they're, they're the beneficiary of the talents that pervades the, the, the death and breath of Nigeria. I think we should welcome. But, but, but that, does that mean that should remain? Because I, for instance, I want to go back home. No matter where you live, outside of your territory, outside, outside of your house, if you go out each day, you want to go back home. To me, Nigeria is home. And I want to be a part. I want to be a part of that discussion to make Nigeria a better place. So that's what we're going to call it a wrap on this program. That's we're going to end it today on facts and figure. Everybody wants to go back home. I myself want to go back home. I want to see a better Nigeria. I want to go back to Nigeria, invest in Nigeria, make a great nation, which the, the place I'm, I'm I'm giving back to. So everybody want to come back home. But the question is. Our leaders, are they ready to do the right thing for people who have come to foreign lands to come back home and invest? Next week, we're still going to be on the same topic about Nigeria. I must comment to you. Thank you very much. I must say thank you to you, Mr. Adelaide, for coming on this program today. Uh, I'll say thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak out what a lot of Nigerians want to listen to what they want to hear, other than all those uh, um, other talking points or other chance who will say the right and will tell the truth. So right now, join us same time next week on the same program, Facts and Figure. I remain, I remain converter or at the moment. Thank you. Discover the uniqueness in the entertainment industry. African Broadcasting Network, ABN, is now the pace setter in the industry. Do you want to advertise your product and services? Count on us. We will do it much more than your expectations. African Broadcasting Network, ABN, will deliver quick and prompt services. Our quality and clarity stands us out when it comes to delivering quality broadcasting. Our staffs are hardworking and versatile in the specific field of office. Our environment is so conducive and we are open to all. We also give advice on how to run your business profitably. African Broadcasting Network is situated at 9894 Business Street, Suit 875, Houston, Texas 77036. Contact phone 281 652 8396 and 832 490 8203. Website www.abntvnetwork.com. ABN celebrating Africans' rich cultural heritage.